Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna to be talking about pH and also my favorite and least favorite pH meters. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And also, check out our sponsors, Robert Bergman's ILGM and Mars Hydra for all your horticultural needs. Also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also don't forget, if you wanna come and set with us, check out our grows and just chill with us, follow us on Instagram, link to that will also be in the description below. So I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys since the last few videos, asking me to do some videos on pH and pH meters. And it's a topic I haven't really gone over in a long time. I don't, I don't, I actually don't even remember the last time I did a video on anything related to pH. So I figured why not just make a video about it, right? So first we're gonna be talking a little bit about pH and then we're going to be going over some pH meters you know that I would recommend and some that I just really would not recommend. For a lot of you new growers out there, pH is how you measure how acidic or alkaline your water is and it ranges from 1 to 14. Now water is considered neutral so by default the water's pH is always going to be 7. Now of course depending on where you live and your water quality it's always going to be different. Like where I live the water is like really hard. It must be from the dead bodies that are probably in the water or something. Let's be real here. DWC means deep water culture but in my case it might as well mean dead water culture. <laughs> When you're trying to lower your pH, and just think about it this way, you're gonna wanna put in something acidic like vinegar or lemon juice. Me personally, I prefer lemon juice. But if the pH is higher than 7.0, you're gonna wanna use something like baking soda, something more alkaline. Now, of course, you could always use pH up and pH down. It depends on who you are, though. I know when I started out, I used the pH up and pH down from General Hydroponics. Our plants like pH to be slightly acidic, and everyone's gonna give you a different answer, but I've always liked my pH between 6.0 to 6.3, and though if my pH ends up being like 5.8 to 5.9. I'm not gonna really make a big deal out of it. Just remember that rainwater on average is like, I think it's like 5.0 to 5.5. So that's still gonna be pretty good. If your pH falls a little bit under six, don't stress out too much, it should be fine. Now the reason that I say 6.0 to 6.3 is because I've actually run my pH a little bit higher and I ended up getting locked out. I went to my shop, this was like a long, I mean a long time ago when I first kind of started out. And I was saying, you know, I kind of got locked out. What's your pH at? Oh, you know, 6.5, 6.6, I'll try 6.0. Then I tried 6.0 and I didn't have a problem ever since. So now, why is pH important when you're growing? I mean, we already know what pH is, but how does the pH of your growing medium affect the growth and health of your plants? Even somebody with a half a brain knows that all plants require nutrients for healthy growth. I hope you guys all know that, right? Your plants need nitrogen, they need phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, pretty much macronutrients and micronutrients. And I feel like a lot of people understand that your plants do need the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium because, you know, the first thing that we learn when we start is understanding NPK. Yeah, everything you read is NPK. All the bottles and amendments, you see NPK ratios, but you can't forget about the micronutrients either, like the stuff I talked about, the calcium, magnesium, iron, the sulfur, copper, all that stuff, can't be forgetting about that. And if your pH level is not where it needs to be, they won't be able to take in any nutrients, and that's how you're gonna end up getting locked. Out. So your plants don't eat until your pH level is on point. So pH level is on point, they can have dinner or what you know, food or whatever. You get what I'm trying to say here. Now the best way to tell if you got locked out is if your plants are feeling a little sad and then you feed them and then nothing changes. Like they're still feeling kind of sad. So that's when you want to flush. And when I say flush, I'm not saying use sledgehammer. I hate that stuff. I've always hated the sledgehammer. You guys know what I'm talking about. The picture of the kangaroo with the sledgehammer from Bush Doctor. It literally smells like soapy water and to rinse it out, you know, you gotta like, you gotta like rinse your, your jug three times and it's just really annoying. There's definitely a way better to do this. So now, the, now what's the best way, right? The best way to flush is to hit your plants with a gallon of water, wait about 15 or 20 minutes, and then hit them again with another gallon of water. I've done that multiple times before and your plants just feel rejuvenated and they just feel great and they're ready to feed now. I know that some people, because there's always that one guy that you know does not pH their water, but those of you that still have been getting great results, you're lucky. 
okay? Your water probably stays in the range that it's supposed to be. And another thing that I do want to add is that if you are aerating your water, your pH is gonna drop after 24 hours. So the next time you wanna water your plants, fill up your bucket and check your pH then aerate your water for 24 hours and then check your pH again and then let me know if you see a difference in your pH levels. I know the first time that I did it, I was kind of amazed because my pH in the water used to be around 7.5 and sometimes it would go all the way up to 8.0. You know, it's a dead body water, but... Lately, it's been around 6.9. I think like the last half year, it's been around 6.9. And I would aerate for 24 hours and my pH level would actually drop to about 6.1 on average. So that's just something you guys want to keep in mind. So now that we have a pretty good understanding about pH levels and just an understanding about pH in general, let's talk about some of the meters that I think are reliable and some of them that I just don't think are that reliable. Now, when I first started out, I was all about getting the cheapest pH meter. I, I didn't want to spend all that money on the pH meter I, I didn't think it was like that important and boy was I wrong so the first thing we're gonna talk about are those cheap Amazon meters you guys all know what I'm talking about the ones that are like the really simple pH meters that are like maybe five ten fifteen dollars on Amazon and guys I firmly believe and you get what you pay for. And you know, you pay 10 or $15 the pH meter. You're constantly gonna have to recalibrate. You're never really gonna know what your pH levels are because they're always gonna be whacked out. Like literally almost every single time I would have to recalibrate. If you don't have to, then you're lucky. But whatever pH meters that I got on Amazon, they were just not reliable. And I got two of them. I got the first one because I figured that was a fluke. It was probably just a bad one. Then I bought another one from Amazon and I got the same thing. I'm like, wait, what's going on? here then I figured all right I'm gonna spend a little more I'm gonna to go to my local hydro shop and then I ended up getting the HM digital I don't have it because I rage quit like on this pH meter I literally got mad and I like freaking chucked it and like the glass broke and that's another story for another time. Now, like I'm saying, the HM Digital, look it up if you haven't seen it before. I actually went to my shop. Actually, it's the same shop that I still go to right now. This guy referred to HM Digital, and now this is the first HM Digital that I got. I ended up getting two. The first one actually worked pretty good for two years. Maybe on the third year, it's the pH, you know, the pH wasn't calibrating correctly and I was just having issues with it so I figured you know what I got two years out of it I looked it up and I saw that usually pH meters last about two three years anyway so I'm like okay I'm gonna buy another one so I bought the same one I bought the HM digital but this time I bought it from Amazon and I have no idea why but it just was not calibrating correctly I I don't know if it's because I bought it on Amazon and I got the first one from the hydro shop but HM digital is not really that reliable anymore maybe they were back in like 2015 but they're just they're just not what they used to be now let's talk about the Apera 20 the one that I use the one I keep raving about I got it right over here it comes in this cool little case this by far is my favorite pH meter this is my go-to pH meter I've had this since last summer I know I've only had it for a year but you almost never have to calibrate it so let's open this up real quick and this is what it looks like when you get it. You have like the, you know, the calibration solution. It's still really good. So you have the 4.0 and you have the 7.0. So this is the, that's the 4.0. Uh, you can't even see it, but. And this one is the 7.0. You guys can see that, right? This is the Apera 20 pH meter. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. And you pretty much have your, your power button over here and your calibration button. So you turn this on, and then if you wanna calibrate, you would just hold this in, and it automatically is gonna to calibrate to 7.0, unless you wanna change it, of course, but this is a really good pH meter. I hardly have to recalibrate it. I actually recalibrated it this morning, and it was at 7.1. I mean, it was barely off, and the last time I had to recalibrate this was maybe maybe five months ago, five, six months ago, and I mean, it was never off. I would use the calibration solution. I, I use different kinds of calibration solution. I would use the Blue Labs and the one that came with the Apera, and I mean, <laughs> it was maybe off by a point, if that. So if you guys are in the market for a pH meter, I highly recommend the Apera. It doesn't have to be the Apera 20. I know they got the Apera 60. Someone in the comment section, whoever you are, you know who you are, commented that you had great results with the Apera 60. So if you want the Apera 20, that's still good too, even though it's cheaper if you want to save a couple bucks. Apera is great. Now, Blue Labs, because I actually just mentioned about the pH calibration solution. I really like their, their calibration solution. It, it, it's always been reliable for me. 
Now as far as the Blue Labs pH meters, they're very expensive. I think I saw some for like $80, $90. And when you spend that kind of money, you're going to be expecting to have quality. You can expect to have a really good pH meter. And I've heard nothing but great stuff about Blue Labs. Let me know in the comment section what pH meters you're using. If you're using Blue Labs, if you're using a pair of HM Digital. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there now. There wasn't a lot of stuff available a few years ago, but like a lot of companies are just coming out with products left and right, left and right. And that goes for like LEDs or pH meters, all the different soils out there. It's just crazy how much marketing there is now. There's so much stuff available for you guys. Pretty much from what I hear, Blue Labs is the best of the best. You won't be disappointed. I think it has a five-year warranty. Someone mentioned that Blue Labs has a five-year warranty on their pH meters, which is great. So if it dies in three, four years, get, get, get a new one with that warranty and you got a pH meter for like seven, eight years. Even if you spend like $80, $90, if you have a pH meter for that long, seven, eight years, that's still pretty good, right? And secondly, you know, if you want the Apera, this is really good. I've only had this since last summer, and so we had it for pretty much over, a little bit over a year, because I think I got this in May of last year, so the Apera and Blue Labs would probably be your best bet. HM Digital, I'm gonna say no. Maybe a few years ago, maybe. I mean, they were good for the first two years when I started growing, but then after that, it just kinda, kinda crapped out. And stay away from those cheap Amazon ones, the 10, 15 dollar ones, because you're gonna spend that money, you think you're gonna save a whole bunch of money, you're gonna save like 20, 25 bucks, or 30 bucks, whatever. And then you're gonna have to go out and then you have to buy one of these, like in the pair of Blue Labs. And guess what? That $15 or $20 that you saved, now you're gonna have to spend even more money on top of the first one, the first Amazon one that you bought. So you're already in the hole. So do the right thing. Make sure that your pH meter is on point. Make sure you get a good one off the bat. Don't try to go cheap here. All right, guys, so I hope I covered enough about pH and the different meters that I think are gonna be good and the ones that I just don't really think are gonna be good. But before we end today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really do appreciate it a lot. All right, guys, so I'm gonna close off today's video. Drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content if you're not already subscribed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.